Cabin at the End of the World is a 2018 novel by Paul Tremblay. It is a horror novel about a family vacationing and they have to stop the apocalypse. Smack the Cabin is a 2023 theatrical release directed by M. Night Shyamalan and it is the story about a family on vacation in the woods and they have to stop the apocalypse. The first half of both of these properties are virtually identical um, but around the halfway point they take very different directions and so that is what this video is going to be. A review for the book, a review for the movie, we'll talk about spoilers after that and then some potential fixes that I have. First let's talk about my relationship with Paul Tremblay. It's not great. This is the third book of his that I have attempted to read and the first one that I have actually finished. I didn't have the previous two. So if you are a Paul Tremblay stan this is probably the type of thing that will work for you. It didn't really work as much for me. The opening chapter is one of the best opening chapters that I've ever read. It is about when the daughter who is catching grasshoppers when Leonard, one of the intruders, appears and and they have a nice little conversation. I thought that the voice of Wen was very true to an eight-year-old girl and the sense of dread was incredible. The problem with this book, as I think is a problem in a lot of Paul Tremblay stuff, is that it never really gets anywhere. It is very slow, it is very ambiguous, and it stayed very one note for me throughout the whole thing. But I will say I read this knowing that I was going to see the movie and who the cast was, so I was able to read quite a bit more in. This is the kind of thing that is very much built for performances that you don't necessarily get on page but you do get on screen. So so being able to not fan cast, actually fan cast everyone in my head, I think definitely did enhance my reading experience. Without spoilers, there's not a whole lot more I can say. I did end up giving it a three star, which I think is fair. There are some really bright spots, but for the most part, you're just kind of hanging around waiting for stuff to happen. It's people talking and saying the same thing and we never really get anywhere. We do, but... It takes a while. You can't do this every time he's in on the floor. Now for the movie. I have no great love for Shyamalan but I don't dislike him. I thought that this would actually be a really good opportunity because this is a very loose horror novel that I thought he could put his signature twist on and still have like a firm foundation. It's a very interesting a concept I thought the book but I, I needed more to it. I will say that the casting is absolutely perfect. Dave Bautista as Leonard is like exactly, he's the only person who could play him. Uh, Jonathan Groff is my boy so I was very excited to see him and that he sings. If you get Jonathan Groff you gotta make him sing. But the whole cast was incredible. I, I particularly liked whoever plays Adrian. I thought that she was incredible and uh, Rupert Glint was in it for all of um, can I say how long he was in it? He was in it for a short time um, but I thought that he did a really good job with it. But immediately upon starting the movie my first problem was that it's all shot like this. They are extreme close-ups so much of the time that really aren't building on the tension at all. And this is a rated R horror movie with cutaway gore. That was one of the things that I was most excited to see and I think that doing proper gore in this would actually be really easy and inexpensive uh, but no we just cut away for all of it. That was super disappointing. I was very tense during the movie like there were definitely certain scenes that I had a good time in but overall the tension didn't maintain itself. It was interesting going to see it with a friend of mine because within the book and maybe the book helps I was convinced that this one thing was happening and she was convinced that this thing was happening. So I think maybe if I had thought this I might have had a better time but who knows. If I was gonna read the movie I'd probably give it like a three out of five. I had a good time but I don't have any desire to ever rewatch it. That is it for non-spoilers. If you are interested in either the book or the movie I recommend you go away now. You can always come back. Now let's talk about spoilers. The biggest one is that there is no twist either in the book or in the movie. The apocalypse is happening. It is much more clear in the movie than in the book but it's it's just kind of one note. So the whole premise of How to Stop the Apocalypse is that the this family Wen and her two dads have been chosen that one of them has to make a sacrifice, choose to die, and then one of the other members of the family has to kill them. And the big 
place where these two properties split is that in the book when dies accidentally it is not deemed a satisfying sacrifice and the dads choose not to sacrifice one of themselves and presumably the apocalypse is happening. The book leaves it quite ambiguous so there's a chance that the apocalypse isn't happening but like it pretty much is and they're going to be the only two people left alive. Whereas in the movie when does not die and I was happy that I didn't have to watch this poor girl die but um, it does sort of fundamentally change the direction that it has to take because when doesn't die and they make it very clear that the apocalypse is happening like there's a plane falling out of the sky right in front of their eyes um, and so the dads do choose that Eric decides that he wants to sacrifice himself so that Wen can have a future. Now this is fine and I think that like thematically yeah sure it works it's a little bit saccharine but that's fine but it also just sort of doesn't lean into the horror side of it and because this is a gay couple um it falls into barrier gaze at that point and it's interesting Paul Tremblay talks about like why this is a gay couple and his answer is basically I have gay relatives and I wanted to represent them in a book which is fine but you like falling into a trope like barrier gays does sort of fundamentally impact the entire story. And the book especially kept reminding me I wish I knew where I had heard this but they were talking about how for indigenous peoples the apocalypse has already happened like they've been wiped out and their lands have been taken from them like that was the worst case scenario and it's already happened so I felt sort of similarly with this gay couple their daughter is dead like we don't owe the world anything the world never gave us anything so let it burn and I think that that is an interesting take the book doesn't necessarily say it outright whereas the movie says everything outright but it works and I think that it was a good choice for the story. The movie though falls much more into bury your gaze because one of them has to die and also it's it's you do this whole backstory of Eric and Andrew and like them adopting Wen and meeting with parents and stuff like that um but they never kiss first of all which was so weird to me about this family whose love is so pure that they're gonna save the universe um that they shied away from just showing a gay kiss on screen like that just really takes you out of it and feel like they aren't thinking through the implications of this being a gay couple because then also the tragic gay symbol sacrifices himself which sure does make sense for the character wanting to do it for his daughter but do we really need another tragic gay story? I also just wanted to mention how short the movie is it's only like an hour and 40 minutes uh, but they're really padding it like there's a very long epilogue scene where you see that the world is recovering and that felt really unnecessary. I would have preferred to spend more time either in the family's backstory or get the backstory of the visitors because they are included in the book. You get their perspectives a little bit in the book. Now let's talk about how to fix this. Um, my first issue was that the visitors never felt like they were actually trying to prevent the apocalypse like they they should have done so much more to convince this family and they just didn't so I thought that the movie was going to do this differently because the visitors are having visions and the opening crawl is drawings that they've been doing of what they're seeing in their heads and they're very like disturbing uh, childlike drawings of the apocalypse happened. So what I wanted to happen was they just got these in their back pocket literally and they pulled them out and be like I drew this this is what's gonna happen and then it reflects it on the news. And the book does this, this but poorly and the movie does it but too late so I really needed them to like actually be trying to convince these people because the problem is it's just all these nice people standing by in a room and be like we don't want to do this but like Adrian was fighting for her son and she had a picture of her son but she kept it in the car. Like if I thought that my son was in imminent danger I would be plastering his face everywhere I could go. Like it just felt 
weird and maybe there are restrictions with that like the book makes it much more clear that these people are sort of in a trance they can go into a trance like maybe there are rules but nobody asked so I need someone to ask what the rules are here. My other fix would be to resolve the tension like my biggest problem here is there's seven people and six of them are just very nice people who don't want to be here who like are coaches and nurses and they're just nice people. What you do is you keep Redmond who is um, Rupert Glint's character. He's a, an ex-con and you come to learn that he is actually someone who attacked Eric, no Andrew, yeah, in a couple years ago and then went to prison for it. But that detail is only revealed after Redmond is already dead. So what you do is you don't have dead Redmond be the first death. You have him be like the second last. I think you keep Leonard because he's the big one. And you realize that he is O'Bannon while he's still alive so that there can be a confrontation but then it gets cut off by the time coming for Redmond to die. I just think he was the only one with any kind of like aggression and we needed more of that. We needed more internal conflict between these people other than just like are you telling the truth or not. And the other thing I'd like to improve is um, fixing the barrier gaze, making it not feel like this family is targeted. The movie does some bending over backwards to try to justify what is happening. Maybe not justify, but explain why this is happening. And um, Leonard theorizes that maybe this has been happening for generations. Maybe families have always been stopping the apocalypse. And he says like a very direct quote that this family's love is so pure that they can save the world. This is probably a bit too ambitious, but what I would have loved to seen or how you get around bury your gaze is to show other families have done this and have made the choice and that this is just another family. Like straight couples have been doing this, multi-generational families have been doing this, maybe found families have been doing this, so that it's not quite as targeted. I think that it definitely still is and get some queer writers on this to make sure that it doesn't fall into any unfortunate tropes. But I think that that would do a good job of world building, making this not feel like such an isolated small story, which I think the book you buy into more. It's it's much more isolated. This thing you get a lot of perspective from the outside world. I felt that I needed more justification, especially when Leonard's just like saying wild things that have no basis in reality. That's it for me. That is my very brief review. I could ramble about this forever, but I'm trying to keep it short. Please let me know if you have seen either the book or the movie. I would love to chat about them. Love to get your take on whether this is the best Shyamalan ever or the worst Shyamalan ever, which apparently is what everyone says when all of his movies come out. I mean, maybe not all of them. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!